Hey friends, how is everyone? So I did this video outside and it's like 50 degrees here. It's windy and cold and I tried to do this video outside and it did not turn out very well. I wanted you guys to see the tulips so I will post some pictures in here so you can see the tulips and they're very pretty. And um, I have been listening recently just to Miles Monroe. So I go through um, different um, mentors that I like to listen to. So Miles Monroe and Power of the Subconscious Mind. So both that book and Miles Monroe linked up on YouTube. So I just heard some really good things with him and I want to share that with you. So um, what he came to is we have two brains. So we have our logical, our thought brain, the conscious mind. You know, it's aware of all of our senses, the five senses. And then we have our heart brain, which is the reflection of our beliefs. And those two stay in alignment and then you have that harmony. So um, what he said is your belief is on your heart and that's a reflection of you, of who you are and what you project onto yourself and what you're going to draw to you. So in the scripture, um, it talks a lot about uh, the fruit on the, on the um, tree. So um, fruit is connected to the root. So the heart he's suggesting is our subconscious mind. Our thought mind is our conscious mind and those two are both connected together. So Christ is, you know, arising in our subconscious mind. That's our belief. So we want to feed it with our thoughts. But however, our thoughts move very rapidly and our belief and our heart, it moves slower. That's why we need to protect it. Um, so fruit is connected to the root. Love the Lord with all your heart. And then it goes on to say that our heart will interpret things slowly. So that's our belief. It takes some believing in our heart for things to really manifest and happen. So, um, and you, you can't be trusted until, you know, things, other people or yourself can't be trusted until it gets right into the heart. So um, that, that resonated with me. So I came up with my own affirmation that says, I want all of me and a welcome home, Kamala, because that's who you believe who you are in your heart. That's a reflection. I want all of me. Why wouldn't my friends or my family or my partner want all of me? So um, that just resonated with me. Like, I'm believing it. I want all of me. Guess what I'm going to attract? Someone who wants all of me too. So it will work for you. Try it. So scroll marked number 10 with Agmandino. So um, I just... I love his um, I love his writing, his affirmations, and I think you guys will too on this one. This is our last one, and then we're done with this book. So who is of so little faith that in a moment of great disaster or heartbreak has not called on his God? Has, who has not cried out when confronted with danger, death, or mystery beyond his normal experience or comprehension? From where has this deep instinct come, which escapes from the mouth of all living creatures in moments of peril? So also Miles Monroe reminded me of this too, as who is of so little faith. So we also talked about in our heart, if there's unbelief in there, we need to pull that unbelief out. You need to become very aware if, and uh, mindful on anything in your heart that is unbelief. So as you affirm yourself through scripture, through positive affirmation of truth, of what truth is with what Christ says you are. I have a little book. I don't have it here, but um, all of these scriptures that God says who we are. So um, belief versus unbelief. So who is of little faith? So little faith is unbelief. I mean, we have faith. We have it there, but it's the unbelief that pulls us back away from it. So move your hand in haste before another's eyes and his eyes eyelids will blink. Tap another on his knee and his leg will jump. Confront another with dark horror and his mouth will say, my God, from the deep impulses. My life need not be filled with religion in order for me to recognize this greatest mystery of nature. All creatures will walk the earth, including man, possess the instinct to cry for help. Who do we possess this instinct 
who do we possess this instinct, this gift? Are not our cries a form of prayer? Is it not incomprehensible in a world governed by nature's law to give a lamb or a mule or a bird or a man the instinct to cry out for help? Lest some great mind has also provided that the cry should be heard by superior powers, power having the ability to hear and to answer our cry, henceforth I will pray, but my cries for help will only be cries for guidance. Never will I pray for the material things of the world. I am not calling to a servant to bring me food. I am not ordering an innkeeper to provide me with room. Never will I seek delivery of gold, love, good health, petty victories, fame, success, or happiness. Only for guidance will I pray that I may be shown the way to acquire these things, and my prayer will always be answered. The guidance I seek may come, or the guidance I seek may not come, but are not both of these an answer? If a child seeks bread from his father and is not forthcoming, has not the father answered? I will pray for guidance and I will pray as a saleswoman in this manner. O creator of all things, help me. For this day I go out into the world naked and alone and without your hand to guide me, I will wander far from the path which leads to success and happiness. I ask not for gold or garments or even opportunities equal to my ability. Instead, guide me so that I may acquire ability equal to my opportunities. You have taught the lion and the eagle how to hunt and prosper with teeth and claw. Teach me how to hunt with words and prosper with love so that I may be a lion among men and an eagle in the marketplace. Help me to remain humble through obstacles and failures, yet hide not mine eyes and the prize will come with victory. Assign me tasks to which others have failed, yet guide me to pluck the seeds of success from their failures. Confront me with fears that will temper my spirits, yet endow me with courage to laugh at my misgivings. Spare me suf sufficient days to reach my goals, yet help me to live this day as though it be my last. Discipline me in the habit of trying and trying again, yet show me the way to make use of the law of averages. Favor me with alertness and recognize Favor me with alertness to recognize opportunity, yet endow me with patience, which will concentrate my strength. Bathe me in good habits that the bad ones may drown, yet grant me compassion for weakness in others. Suffer me to know that all things shall pass, yet help me to count my blessings of today. Expose me to hate so that hate so that it not be a stranger yet fill my cup with love to turn strangers into friends. But all these things be only if they will. I am a small and lonely grape clutching the vine, yet thou hast made me different from all others. Verily, there must be a special place for me. Guide me, help me, show me the way. Let me become all you plan for me. When my seed was planted and selected by you to sprout in the vineyard of the world. Help this humble saleswoman. Guide me, God. So isn't that awesome? I just love it. It makes me feel so good and warm inside to, um, to read that to you. And subscribe below. I have more books coming. I have more um, content coming. So it's going to be good stuff. And... Um, like me and then if you do a little bell my daughter told me that that'll show up and alert you when i have new content coming so every day monday through friday i'll post something um of, in, that's inspiring and um that you may enjoy so comment below subscribe and um i'll post this on facebook as well so that my facebook um friends and family will be able to see this as well so thanks friends have a good day